Spore is a great and interesting game that does a lot of different things. The concept sounds very ambitious. You create a single cell and guide it through five stages of the evolutionary process, from simple building block to galactic civilization. In practice, however, Spore is a rather simplistic game that succeeds mainly because of its robust creation tools and community integration. If you've played with the Spore Creature Creator, which was released earlier this year, you've seen Spore's best feature. The tools for creating your vision are brimming with options, but incredibly easy to use, letting you snap arms and legs onto the body, add weapons and other features, and then twist and mold them as you see fit. With these amazing options, you can create a work of beauty or an ugly monstrosity. Either way, the best part of Spore is creating a beast and watching it lumber and flit about in the game world. In a game of Spore proper, however, you'll start much more simply. You start with a 2D cell in the first stage and swim around looking for food and new parts while avoiding fish that would gobble you whole. Depending on whether you go the carnivore or herbivore route, or both, you'll eat floating algae bits or attack smaller creatures for their meat. It's incredibly simple and plays like a cross between the games Flow and Pac-Man. You'll graduate to the second stage, the creature stage, pretty quickly. You'll be able to add some appendages, but you won't have the full set of creation options yet. Once you're ready, you take your evolved creature to land and wander about either making friends, driving other nests to extinction, or both. If you go for violence, you have up to four attacks to use. If you want to make friends, you have four social options like singing and dancing. The joy of this stage is finding new parts to use for your creature and gawking at, or running from, the charming and hideous creatures inhabiting the world. The gameplay itself is really simple and not all that engaging. When it's time to enter the tribal stage, the third stage, you get one last chance to adjust the physical features of your creation, though you can add different clothing items and other doodads. From here, you control a small tribe, gathering food and, again, fighting or making friends with the neighbors. You'll still see the cool sights and immense charms that the creature stage possesses, but the gameplay is now a really watered-down real-time strategy game. As before, the awkward charms and insanely cool beasts around you carry the stage. Actually, playing this stage is amusing, but it's too stripped to be totally fulfilling. <laughs> The civilization stage loses some of the charms of the creature-oriented stages, but does at least add some more complex elements. You'll also be creating some more stuff, like houses and vehicles, and the tools are simply incredible, just as you'd expect. There are a few thin additional layers of gameplay here, such as being able to take other cities by force, religious conversion, or economic means, but all three play almost exactly the same way. Again, it isn't the gameplay that you'll enjoy as much as the little things, like seeing your giant holographic creature preaching over an enemy's city, or messing with the customizable music options. And finally, you have the space stage, in which you fly about in your ship from star to star and planet to planet. In this stage, you encounter various civilizations, and again, you can choose to befriend them or wipe them out. This works somewhat like the creature stage in the sense that you control only your own ship and can be accompanied by a few friendly craft from allied nations. But the scope is enormous and the customization tools expand to let you terraform planets, which isn't just for cosmetic purposes but also lets you make it possible for new colonies to expand. This is the one stage that stands on its own, though it isn't nearly as deep as most given space exploration games. It is very charming though, and you'll spend a good amount of time running simple missions for your galactic neighbors who speak in an amusing variation on the usual simlish. So none of the five stages really hold up in light of any given similar game, but taken together, Spore is a big and impressive experience that relies a lot on its incredible charm. It also relies on the content that you and other players provide to round out the online Sporepedia, which is a database of your creations and those of others. Assuming you play while connected to the internet and sign into a Spore account, your game will be populated by other players' creatures. 
Browsing the Sporpedia and browsing the incredible imaginative creatures, buildings, and vehicles made by other members of the Spore community is a lot of fun. And it's also simply a lot of fun to encounter these things within your own game. Throw in the incredible customization tools and you have a fun and light experience that most players will enjoy. Spore's individual gameplay elements aren't anything special, but as parts of such a broad and charming package, they work far better. All in all, this is a fun and cohesive game that will provide many easygoing hours of entertainment for almost anybody.